All right, so here's another type of problem. I'll prove the cofunction identity uh, cosine pi over 2 minus x is equal to the sine of x. So I told you these were true um, on your sheet, but we can actually use the sum and difference formulas to prove that the left side is equal to the right side. So let's do this. The cosine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to the sine of x. And remember, we're saying we don't know if these are equal, even though we do know, okay? So let's call this angle A and angle B. This is a difference of angles. So I know that the cosine of A minus B is equal to the cosine of A times the cosine of B plus the sine of A times the sine of b, okay? So let's go ahead and start filling that in. The cosine of pi over two times the cosine of x plus the sine of pi over two times the sine of x may equal the sine of x. And sometimes I forget here that I can actually just evaluate these. The sine, the cosine of pi over two, uh, you know, pi over two, that's the point zero comma one, so the cosine would be zero, times cosine x plus one times the sine of x might equal the sine of x. Let's see, cosine times zero, that whole thing will go to zero. So I get the sine of x equals the sine of x. We are verified. Number four, find all solutions in the interval between zero and two pi. So just one full rotation. Um, and then we can use our graph and calculator to verify this. So um, this is a mess. I have a lot of adding and subtracting of angles here. So let's rewrite this. This I'm going to use the sum and difference formula. So the sine, I'm going to call this angle A and angle B. And then second, we'll call this angle A and angle B. Okay, so we'll start with the pink. Um, the sine of x times the cosine of pi over 4 plus the cosine of x times the sine of pi over 4 plus, okay, the second uh, difference formula is the sine of x times the cosine of pi over 4 minus the cosine of x times the sine of pi over 4, and that is equal to negative 1. All right, let's see what magic we can work. Looks like these will cancel. And I actually can add these two up to give me 2 sine x times the cosine of pi over 4 is equal to negative 1. Ooh, that's so much nicer. What is the cosine of pi over 4? Oh, remember... Uh, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So times root 2 over 2 is equal to negative 1. Looks like these 2s are going to cancel. And I can actually do the sine of x is equal to negative 1 over root 2. I'm going to rationalize because we don't usually see that ratio like that. So negative root 2 over 2. So when is the sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 equal to an angle x? So, let's see, angles, angles. My ratio is negative, so sine is principal quadrants are here, okay? So the ratio is, for sine is negative root 2 over 2. That would be a 45 degree angle, or pi over 4. And I have a second angle here, um, which would, this would be 
also be a 45. That would give us a sine ratio or a vertical height of negative root 2 over 2. So it looks like x is going to equal negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And x will equal 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Now this is all solutions. Okay, So how do I get the solutions for only x's between 0 and 2 pi? Okay, What I can do is I'm going to start with the first top equation. x is equal to negative pi over 4. Is that is negative pi over 4 between 0 and 2 pi? Nope. But I'm going to add 2 pi to that. So adding 8 to the top gives me 7 pi over 4. This one's between 0 and 2 pi. If I add another 8, that would be 15 pi over 4. That's too big. That's outside of the, my domain. Okay, so 7 pi over 4 is a coterminal angle of negative pi over 4. And then the second equation, 5 pi over 4, well, that's between 0 and 2 pi. I'm going to add 2 pi. That gives, so plus 8, that gives me uh, 13 pi over 4. Uh, that's larger than 2 pi, so that's not in our solution set. So our answers are x is equal to 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Okay, last one. Uh, this one is extra. So right as an algebraic expression, we're going to start with the cosine of arc, sine, arc cosine of x minus arc sine of x. So I know that what I'm going to get here is an angle. So I'm going to say let um, arc cosine of x equal theta and then let arc sine of x equal um, let's, let's do um, I don't know. Let's do beta. Yeah, why not? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a triangle here for beta. This is my ratio. Uh, it's really x over 1. So the angle beta, the sine is x over 1. So how would I solve for the third side? Well, I could use Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus um, question mark squared is equal to 1 squared. So question mark squared is equal to 1 minus x squared, and then square root, 1 minus x squared. OK, so I get the question mark is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's draw a triangle for, for the angle theta. And this time it's cosine is x. And the hypotenuse is 1. It's the same math. So I'm just going to get 1 minus x squared. Just a different leg. Okay. So now I can, I'm going to go ahead and say that the cosine of the arc cosine of x minus the arc sine of x, both of these equal angles. So arc cosine is equal to theta, we called it, and then arc sine is equal to beta. And now we have a difference of angles. Okay, so the cosine, and we'll call that a and b. So the cosine of theta times the cosine of beta plus the sine of theta times the sine of beta. All right, so do we know these ratios? Well, yes, we do. Um, this is the purple triangle. 
And these are the ratios from the pink triangle. Okay, so from the pink triangle, the cosine of beta is the square root of 1 minus x squared all over 1. And the sine of beta is, well, we, that was given, x over 1. Okay, purple triangle, cosine is x over 1. Sine would be x over 1. And then we're adding these together. Okay, so that gives us... Um, well, I messed up. Who did I mess up on? It is the purple triangle. You can see right here that this should be the sign. So the height would be 1 minus x squared. That's better. Okay. Now I have the two of the same thing being added together. So I have 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that is it. We are done.